Hi, um, Scott Beer here, and I was going to talk about my DNA test, and I kind of got sidetracked, and I bring it up a lot. And so I was watching the YouTube channel, and I noticed there's quite a few people discussing their discoveries. So I thought I would mention mine. Um, I know I should have shaved, but I've been. Uh, working a lot. We opened up our second location. I'm the baker at the Dark Nectar Cookie Kitchen, and we opened up the Dark Nectar Coffee Roasting location, which is over in Atascadero, California. Anyway, back to the uh, DNA test. So I was tracing my family tree. My last name is Beer, just like the beverage, B-E-E-R. Um, grandma, would occasionally speak German. She lived with us, and when she was angry, she blurred out something. Um, and I took three years of German in high school. I went to Lutheran church, and then had to go through the German confirmation process uh, because it was a tradition in our family. And even though I'm an atheist, I fought tooth and nail, but I finally made it through. Um, I was tracing my family tree back in the 80s in Little Rock, Arkansas at the state capitol. They had a room with microfilm and microfish. I don't know the difference, but you looked on a monitor and you rolled uh, little rolls of tape and you looked for a picture of a page of a census book. And so I traced the family tree back to Hickory, Illinois, 1864, which it was Civil War. So the beers actually came over from Saxon, Germany, and it was real hard to tell the if it was B-E-E-R, B-I-E-R, B-E-I-R, because they used, it looked like a dull number two pencil and it had this really slanted, old style, handwritten logs. And so, you know, I got frustrated and I gave it up. Well, then we got the computer and I had a computer business in Batesville, Arkansas, and I noticed people were coming in asking for ancestry software so they could start doing their family tree, and it was pretty common uh, for older people to come in and ask, and I finally said, what the heck is with all this um, curiosity, and they said, the closer we are to being an ancestor, the more we're interested in it, and I thought, that's clever, and you know, so uh, fast forward about 20 years, I guess, and I'm driving around and listening to this commercial 23andMe talking about the 23 sets of chromosomes. So, I, eh, one of these days, and finally I just decided, hell, I'm going to do this. And I ordered the kit, and just a few days, uh, it showed up, spit in the tube, send it back. Well, I spit in the tube, and I sent it back, and then, uh, I don't know, 10 days, a few weeks later, uh, I got an email saying, here are your results. Okay, cool. So um, I logged in and I wasn't German at all. I'm Sicilian and Irish and a little bit of, uh, I guess, Bosnian, something like that. Anyway, so I called my little sister Susie and I said, hey, did you know that we're not German at all? And she paused and said, well, do you want to know the truth? And I said, yes, I would love to know the truth. And she said, I'm German and you aren't. Mom and dad had a roommate named Lenny Garcio and he's your father. Okay, this is 2017. I found out in 2014, I was raised by the wrong family. So my mom wasn't with us because of some medical issues I'm not gonna talk about, but, um, and then and we had a stepmom, but then I found out that my brothers and sisters, and it's a hodgepodge. So my sisters aren't my sisters, they're my half sisters think and then my brother is my half brother 
and then my half brother isn't my brother at all because that's not my dad but I wrote a letter to Leonard Garcio in Niles, Illinois, because I Googled it. I had the phone here on my shoulder, I'm typing and talking. So I sent a letter, Dear Lenny, I don't know if you know me, but you knew Dolores in August of 1958. Uh, Volare was the number one hit, and here I am. And, you know, I was excited and anxious and angry and just so many emotions that you could imagine, like, why didn't I know? And why did I have to know? And did I really need to know? And now that I know, and so did this guy know about me? Does he want to know about me? Does he care? Has he seen me in the hallway somewhere and never spoke? Or, you know, I don't know anything about it. So what I did do is I received a phone call from a Phoenix, Arizona number, and I didn't pick it up, but later I checked my voicemail just to you know, make sure that somebody's calling from Phoenix, they better pick it up. Um, the voicemail says, hey, this is Carl Garcio, and I'm not your father. And a long pause. But I know the story, why don't you give me a call? What? He knows the story, so I call. His name is Carl Garcio. He's from Niles. Lenny was his younger brother. Lenny died of cancer and, um, well, I'm gonna tell you some of the stories that fit. Okay, so I decide I have to go meet Uncle Carl. And what happened with me was, I grew up with Ron Beer as dad and he wanted to have Ron Beer and Sons trucking. He wanted to start the family thing and moving furniture was not my forte. I couldn't sit still long enough to do the same job anywhere. I've always been a gypsy, nomadic, kind of, uh, you know, those kind of crazy things. Uh, I just couldn't hold still, couldn't hold a job, but not in a bad disrespectful way. I always thought, wow, that seems interesting. I'm gonna take a chance and try it. And I volunteer for everything. I, I just I just had a crazy life where I just skipped around and it's okay, because I'm happy with that kind of lifestyle. But I went in the Navy and mostly, I kind of got tricked by a buddy and all that, but it was to get away from my dad because I did not want to be in the moving industry. Anyway, I had wrestled in high school and dad didn't want me to wrestle, he wanted me to work. So, talking to Uncle Carl, Ron got behind the wheel of a pickup truck back in the 50s. And once he got behind the wheel, all he wanted to do was drive. And his best friend Lenny had no desire to move furniture. And so he had wrestled in high school and he went in the Navy. Of course, I'm like, wait a minute, wow. And I told him, I said, man, that sounds just like me. I said, but I'm always inventing things and tweaking and twisting and, and adjusting and, and manufacturing. And he said, oh my God, your father was an inventor. In fact, he has a patent on something. And so he excused himself for a couple minutes and he went and um, he went to the uh, other room. Now he's yeah, close to 80. I can hear him on the cordless phone, you know, the kind with the antenna, and he calls uh, his sister Josephine, Aunt Joe. Hey, Joe, I think I've got Lenny's kid here in my kitchen. And so I spoke to her, and we decided we should meet. So I drove to Chicago, Illinois, and uh, met with her and, and Uncle Ron, and after about 30 minutes of discussing um, all the similarities that are so uncanny, I literally had chills over and over and over about how close we resembled. Uh, I'm 5'9", he was 5'6", I believe. Um, and it was really interesting. Um, and then Aunt Jo says, would you like to see a picture of him? We had our beards cut identical back in the day when I had a full beard. And um, I mean, identical. We both had Pendletons. In fact, when I saw the picture, 
I really thought that that was a picture of me. I'd never seen anybody that looked just like me. And uh, so we have two guys that are inventors and adjusters and gypsies and nomadic that look identical, that both wrestled in high school and went in the Navy. And um, it's pretty interesting. I never got to meet him. I don't know if he knew I existed because uh, I didn't until uh, three years ago. And um, it's kind of interesting. When my friends say, why didn't anybody tell you? Well, I had heard that my brother was illegitimate. So I didn't bring it up. I was protecting that guy. I loved him and I didn't think he needed to know. Well, it turns out the story was kind of legit, but uh, it was me. However, uh, within minutes of me getting my DNA test, I received an email from somebody that said, oh my God, we're cousins, what is my last name? What the hell kind of, you know, this is a new program. I don't know who's somebody, Nigerian prince wants to meet. Anyway, somebody had been given up for adoption and um, she had no ties to anybody on planet earth except now we're cousins through our DNA. So I told her, well, um, my uncle Larry, oh, she, she was from Denver and knew if I asked if I knew about a redheaded trucker. Yeah, I know Uncle Larry was a redheaded trucker. And she said, Larry who? And I said, Larry Sullivan. Well, she got on the phone and on Google and did all kinds of things. And she found Uncle Larry and she found her birth mother just because we took a DNA test. And uh, so it's kind of fascinating. And I keep in touch with Uncle Carl and Aunt Joe. I probably should spend a little more time with them because they're getting up there. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I have a letter from President Clinton to my father thanking him for his service. And my daughter was married in the Clinton Library. Hey, just two guys that were in the Navy tied in with Clinton, whether you're, you know, whatever your pol politics are, uh, I don't care. Uh, just the fact that two people that never met that have such a strong bond and uh, it's kind of weird. Um, he was a gypsy and a nomad and then Uncle Carl says, well, you got to meet your cousin, which is James William Garcio and he owned the Caribou Ranch who recorded uh, Dan Fogelberg and the Eagles and uh, Michael Jackson, the Elton John's Caribou album. Uh, he was the producer for Electric Light and Blue with Robert Blake. Uh, one of the Buckinghams, he was in, uh, I, he was Frank Zappa's uh, first guitar player, and uh, just kind of a crazy, uh, really cool, now, I'm not a musician, but I do play music, uh, he's a musician, and uh, uh, he discovered the band Chicago, and uh, he's also in Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and he was a guitar player for the Beach Boys. Anyway, that's my claim to fame my cousin and then I met his sister Gina who is in California we haven't met because uh, we're just so busy and I should probably meet my cousin my own flesh and blood um, funny thing our grandfathers Gina and me and James and all those our grandfathers were brothers that were projectionists in uh, Illinois. They came from Italy and both worked in the movie theater running the projector. And I was the projector monitor, fourth, fifth, and sixth at Hoxie Elementary in Norwalk, California, because I was the only one in the class that could figure out how to make the projector work every time. So all year, all summer, I played Donald Duck in Math Magic Land about 400 times, and I know the theory of Pythagoras. Uh, anyway, just uh, projector monitor guys, uh, who knows if it's a DNA trait, but um, it's really interesting. And then I double verified by going to Ancestry.com and almost the identical uh, traits. But uh, thanks to my mom telling my sister that she had an affair with a guy and the name, uh, I was able to trace my roots and we're from Cefalu, Sicily and I'd like to go back there someday. And uh, right now I'm a baker, because it's the new thing. And uh, I was a welder, I drove a forklift, uh, I was a pipe welder, I worked for a gas company, I worked for a shipyard, 
Um, I owned a computer business and uh, always have an honest partner when you do stuff like that. Um, let's see, I was a IT manager for a peripheral company. I was a salesman. I was an insurance salesman. I sold websites. Um, uh, worked with Jenna Jameson's father. We became good buddies. If you know who Jenna Jameson is, you know, you perv. Um, anyway, um, that's kind of it right now. I don't know what else to say. I just thought I would share the story about the DNA and what happens when you spit in a tube. And, uh, you know, they used to say spitters are quitters, but uh, you can learn a lot from uh, dribbling in a tube. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any questions, just, uh, I guess, hit below. I'm going to upload this to YouTube and see how it works. Peace out.